Welcome to Conversations with Tom Shorkey. Conversations explores the past, the present, and the future of the communities in which we live through the eyes of interesting individuals. Now let's join our host, Tom Shorkey. Welcome to Conversations. I'm your host for today's program, Tom Shorkey. It's a uh, Interesting story we have for you today about a very historic establishment uh, in the city of Marine City. You know, in uh, the 20s and the early 30s in this country, it was illegal to buy and sell alcohol. It was known as prohibition. And in the early 30s, prohibition was finally lifted. And one of the first liquor licenses uh, supplied by the state of Michigan went to a little building in Marine City on Chartier Street. It was essentially a two-car garage, <laughs> and it became known famously as the Little Bar, with a history starting in 1933 through today. Our guest on Conversations is the present owner of the Little Bar, Cheryl Verkamen. Welcome Thank to Conversations, Thank Cheryl. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. Cheryl, before we begin chatting about your business, uh, give us, our listeners a little background. You grew up east side of Detroit, is that my understanding? Yep, grew up in Detroit. My dad was a Detroit cop for 25 years. So we had a um, wonderful neighborhood, wonderful community. Everybody looked out for everybody. God forbid you did anything wrong because mm -hmm. Mrs. Botini or mm -hmm. somebody would be yelling at you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then when he retired, uh, we moved to Fairhaven, bought a house on the water. So I literally went from alley picking in the city to pulling everybody water skiing in, in the Fairhaven area. So um, then I went to Algonac High School and, and here we are. Well now you've been in the little bar for the last oh, four or five years, but between Algonac High School and the little bar, what kind of different ventures were you involved with? Uh... Mm. I've done many, many things, that's for sure. Um, you know, after high school, uh, go class of 76 Algonac High School, right? Um, I uh, got my degree in criminal justice and stayed in that field for like 20 years in private security. Um, then had kids, got married, had kids, uh, decided to um, start my own business because I wanted, my, I wanted to, to be there when my kids got on the bus and I wanted them to you know, see me coming off the bus. So I started a house cleaning business and then um, I was a personal trainer and a fitness instructor and um, taught driver's ed for a couple, couple years in this, in this area. Love that. And um, next thing you know, I was just, look, just looking to, to, to buy something, to be my own boss, and here we are. Now, being your own boss, the little bar in Marine City, how did that come about? Mm. And maybe the big question is why? <laughs> yeah, why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was uh, in a relationship with, uh, with Scott Bosher, and, and him and I had both, you know, um, uh, Ended, ended our careers and we were looking to to get something. He wanted to buy something, you know, for uh, like like his dad owned Gord's Bar in mm -hmm. Marine City, right? And you know, but you really nowadays you really can't you know make it make it good and big in a in just the strictly strictly bar right. area. We had looked at purchasing a couple different things, and um, all of a sudden the little bar came. Greg Greg and Sharp Osher were the owners at the time, and that's Scott's cousin, and. Um, and all of a sudden, we just found ourselves, you know, looking at the place, and it was a good fit. Great. And that was you actually around, what, 2012? 2012, 2012 yeah. Yep. But for our listeners at home, I think we've got to do a little walk through <laughs> history here mm, for a minute, memory a little lane. bar. And, and I'll ask you some remembrances that you've heard being such a young person that you would only have heard this from others mm. since you took over. But really in 1933, I think it was a fellow by the name of Joe Cremine who rented that essentially two-car garage right. with a card table and a couple cases of beer and a True. first liquor license. Mm -hmm. And he rented for 10 or 15 years until he and his wife finally bought it in the 40s carried it through to the early 60s, sold it to another family uh, named the Wallaces. And the Wallaces had 
a young bartender named Tom Gibson. Mm. And Tom might have been the one with the vision because early 60s, he bought a third. And a couple years later, he bought the little bar. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the little bar most people remember for approximately 30 years or Very so. Very true, yep. Now, what does some of your clientele tell you about the history of the little bar, mm -hmm. or who was there and who mm -hmm. wasn't? I mean, there is so much, you know, and this is all hearsay on my part because I wasn't around to witness, you know, mm -hmm. um, but there is so much. And, and I had people tell me that they would drive by the little bar and there was nothing but limos, limousines and, you know, cars and people waiting at their cars for their, you know, their, their bosses and stuff like that. They were in eating and drinking. Um, Henry Ford was a regular, you know. Um, there was a story um, that Henry Ford and Lee Iacocca were sitting in the nook. We've got a little area mm -hmm. off the main dining room and it's just got two little, two little tables in there. And they were in there eating, and they had worked together. This is when Iacocca used to work for Ford. Mm -hmm. And um, got into an argument. Henry Ford fired Lee Iacocca, and then left him at the little bar to make his way back to Dearborn or wherever he was from at the time. So that was kind of a cool story. Well, and I think it, that pretty much characterizes the little bar as it was a little more upscale than your typical taverns that dotted many small towns back mm -hmm. in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And uh, I think, uh, to my knowledge, it was Tom Gibson owning. He was the guy during the day, tending the bar, right. meeting people. He had Marvel Zinda and who Marge still, Who Cernowski. still comes in. I've heard that <laughs> Marvel still. She comes in almost every and, week, yeah. And uh, Marge Cernowski, Tony Cernowski was the night uh, bartender, and it stayed pretty much that way for 30 years mm -hmm. with their, whether you had the little filet or the perch or the beer case cheese sandwich yeah. with onion on black bread or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. But that was traditional little bar. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is it maybe the late 90s, Tom Gibson and his wife thought it's time to retire. So they did, they sold the little bar to a very successful restauranter couple from Algonac that had Cheers. Mm -hmm. And when that family came in, probably with good intentions, decided let's make this place bigger and let's add some rooms to it. Mm -hmm. So probably, I don't know if that was the late 90s or it so. It was, yeah. Yep. That the little bar, as everyone knew, failed to exist. And I think what, uh, while we're doing our conversation, I think our, our producer is going to show a picture of that traditional little bar. And if you take a look at it, it looks just like a two-car garage. Mm -hmm. And you look on the inside <laughs> and see it had seven tables and seven stools mm -hmm. or whatever. But it did change at that time. And it changed for three or four years with rooms above and whatever economic hard times hit. And for whatever reason, the little bar closed. Mm -hmm. Now, in talking to you, that was about a 10-year period when there really wasn't much action, is that? It was hard. I mean, and he also, um, uh, they also, he also got sick, no. the, the owner at the time, oh, which was, oh my God, I'm going to forget his name, Randall? Randall, the Randalls. The Randalls, was, yes. yes. Yeah, he got Roy sick. and Paula. Roy and believe. Paula Randall, thank you. Um, yeah, he also, he, he became ill. Um, so the little bar closed for a, a, a good four years. And, you know, you lose a lot of clientele when your doors are closed. And people travel from, you know, Gross Point or the west side or the east side or whatever to come. And, you know, it's done. And then um, that's when Greg and Char bought it. Uh, Greg and Sharf Osher bought it, and um, they opened it up, and you know it was up up and running again. And then there was a fire, and so it was closed for another year. So within a ten year period, it was closed for five years. That's that's a lot. That makes it a little tricky. Makes you it, know what's yes. interesting about the Little Bar fire because I do, people uh, may not remember this, but for some reason, and I don't know if they ever got the guilty party or not, but. Mm. I think it was Anita's, the Marwood. There were like three or four establishments yep. within a few months period that somebody actually started fires in there yes. uh, yep. at those. But 
So then Char and Greg uh, were involved for a while, and then here and comes then. Cheryl Verkamen, who says, I want to run my own business. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Ta da! <laughs> Tell us a little bit, bit about your little bar now, the last four or five years. Oh, my goodness. Give I me mean, all the good parts. And it has been. I mean, honestly, a labor of love, truly. I mean, I am um, somebody that's, I have, I have, I have vision, you know, mm -hmm. and I knew um, sitting down that very first day, um, sitting at the end of the bar, and like I said, I never worked in a restaurant before. I never bartended, you know. So I'm sitting at the end of the bar, I have my little notepad, you know, and I'm going, okay, I think we're gonna like, you know, change this and change that, and I'm looking around, and just the organizational stuff, flow, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I think with every business owner, you, you have to sit back sometimes and look at the entire business with fresh eyes, you know. Um, and uh, obviously, we're, I wanted to increase business and, you know, um, and just make a few changes. My goal was always to get everyone to come into the little bar. I still get people. Last week, I still had a couple come in saying, we have lived in this community our entire lives and have never been in here. Because it was such a hoity-toity place, yeah, it you was. know, mm -hmm. with the cat with the cars outside, that it kind of scared off the regular regular people like like me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> I remember I remember coming into the little bar with my family, you know. We we have a cottage at Cherry Beach. Have had it since the '80s, and you know we would come in for a beer and a burger, you know. Um, but I think that 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 sense of you know it really it means something to me to to have a sense of community in my restaurant to make sure that every we, we have something for everyone you know we, we're not just catering to you know the the higher echelon we want I want everybody to be able to come in and feel welcome you know and to find something good to eat because I have everything on the menu from the best Reuben sandwiches around great burgers to the great steaks you know we've got prime rib on Friday and Saturday that we do and you know, so there's always something for Where, everyone. Uh, it, it appears that the little bar is back. I mean, you, back. you've got uh, a lot of business, a lot of uh, <clears throat> uh, loyal customers. Mm. How does the little bar tie in to the revitalization of downtown Marine City? I mean, is that all? Well, Marine City is, is so seeped in history. You know, um, we have a walkable historic town. The Little Bar is probably the oldest still running establishment in Marine City, I would think, since 1933. I'm sure it is, right? Um, and I, um, I, I'm just, I say it all the time, I'm tickled pink. I'm so thankful that Marine City is making this resurgence. You know, and it's not just Water Street. I mean, I always say Marine City is like a big square. You know, we've got a lot of great shops and restaurants on Water Street. Broadway is, you know, up and coming. There's so many cool places that are opening on Broadway. We've got Parker, which is the back street. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of great places there. And of course, I'm on Chartier, right? Mm -hmm. And Jet's just opened right next door to me mm -hmm. and things. So, um, I mean, you know, the, the Vertons came in and got the Snug and the Riverbank Theaters going. Now the Inn on Water Street's going. Um, you know, that's bringing so many people in. And Marine City is so unique because we have so many cool parks. We're on that internet, you know, the river is an international waterway. You never know what you're going to see coming up and down the river. I'm a water girl. I mean, I love, you know, being, like I said, we have a place at Cherry Beach. I'm always on the dock, you know, swimming and things like that. I've seen yachts go by, cruise ships go by, cool freighters. You never know what you're going to see, you know. And the ferry from Sombra. Yes, exactly. Exactly. How's your, um, would you say, well, if the Snug or the Riverbank Theater are having performances, is it almost mandatory if somebody wants to have a pre-theater dinner that they ought to get a reservation? I mean, is that, does yeah. that bring Yeah, you know, we usually, you? Um, I always recommend reservations for, uh, for sure, six or more. I mean, mm. we are a little bar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we are a little bar still. Um, but we do get pretty hot and heavy when it comes to the theater days. You know, people like to eat before. We get uh, people coming in like all at one time or within a half hour time. Yeah. You know, so I always say recommend, re reservations are definitely recommended. You know. What, um, you, your clientele, you have local, do you get out? Uh, people from outside our county showing up. I mean, that's 
one of the things I have heard about Marine City is that it has been quite a draw for mm -hmm. the like the east side of Detroit, Macomb County, Oakland County people, uh, and Canadian traffic. Uh, yeah, do you a see lot. that? Oh yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I ha we get um, so many people that are you know coming in from like a 45 minute drive in. You know, mm -hmm. and and I'm involved in the, with the Marine City Area Chamber of Commerce, and you know we we kind of spotlight that too. Mm -hmm. We always tell people, you know, if you're looking for a, a day trip, you know, and you want to stay within 45 minutes to an hour of where you live, don't forget Marine City. Don't forget all up and down the waterway, you know, because it's like I said, you'll never know what you're going to see, and there's so many cool communities besides Marine City, of course. Oh, I know there are, <laughs> but if I had to. Uh, ask you to do a 30 second commercial for somebody who has never visited Marine City or any of the establishments and there's a lot of with the fish company and Anita's and Garburgers and mm -hmm. the Little Bar there's a lot of uh, stop so to mm -hmm. speak. Give me a 30 second commercial on why people should visit. Well like I said it's a walkable historic town you know you can park your car and there are so many cool shops not only the restaurants, you know, you can come here and you can literally eat, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then, you know, stop and see a show. But also, you know, you can visit all the cool shops. And, um, you know, everything from, you know, people that are teaching classes in their shops to, you know, home goods that, are in, that, are, that we have. And then we've got the popcorn place and, of course, the, you know, the, the, the candy store, the sweet tooth. You know, there's literally, you know, I don't care if you're, you know, a couple or if you're a family, you know, looking for a whole date. A day thing. We have a beach, you know. The only public beach on the St. Clair River. Absolutely, you know, and uh, and now, the beautiful pavilion and the restrooms that are right there at the beach, you know, that's that's pretty cool stuff. Yes, when you talk about your square right. and uh, Broadway, if you extend your square to the west, is the Dairy Queen, and mm -hmm. I think uh, Shafiq and uh, Denise uh, Kadu were very uh, instrumental in getting that. Um, Pavilion. It's beautiful. Be. Yeah, very thankful for that. Very Great. thankful. Who's been an influence in your life? Um, I'd have to say my dad. In you know. what way? Well, my dad was always a real uh, powerful person in our community. You know, he big, big, burly, six foot four cop. You know, um, but we grew up in the St. David's Parish, and um, I always grew up with us, like I said before, a sense of community. You know, my dad was very involved. He was the head of the booster club for St. David's. And, um, you know, we would, we would have all these, he would put on these fairs and fish fries and, and stuff like that. And I just remember him just being this, this presence, mm -hmm. you know, and, and looking at all projects is, you know, getting involved with everything, with everything and, then, and then never, never having a I can't attitude. You know, that's my attitude. I can do anything. Right, I always say that. All right. <laughs> you can do anything. Put your mind to it, you can do anything. So, and I got that from my dad. You've been in the business for about five years now. What, what's the hardest, what's the most difficult part of being the owner-operator of a dining and uh, bar establishment? Mm. What's the toughest thing? The toughest thing, honestly, is, um, is just the hours, you know. I mean, even though uh, we open it, we normally open at four o'clock in the afternoon. So I have my mornings, you know. It's not like I'm, you know, there 24/7, but I am kind of there 24/7. I mean, I live above the little bar. Mm -hmm. It used to be three rental rooms back when um, Roy and Paula had it. Mm -hmm. You know, that he did he yeah. did Cheers, um, and then he expanded the little bar and put the three rental rooms on top. Greg and Sharfosher, when they bought it, they made that their apartment. So that's where I live. I live upstairs. Um, but you know, there's deliveries and things like that, and there's I, I always think of something to do. So um, it, it's 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 a it's a commitment, that's for sure. It's a labor of love. If you um, and you're part of the Chamber of Commerce in right. Marine City, and if somebody came to you and said, Cheryl, we're thinking about opening a restaurant, what advice would you have for them? Um, just to make sure that you know that they look at. Look at the fact that it's it's a, a, a huge commitment. You know, you can't. You have to be present in your restaurant. You know, that's one of the things that I always feel very guilty if I'm on vacation. You know, or if I'm away. You know, I'll have people say to me, "We came in and we missed you." You know, mm -hmm. I try to be there all the time. You know, but I need a break too. Yeah. You know, but you really have to. You have to be totally committed, 100%. Yep. Now I saw, and I believe it was on your website. Uh, 
you are involved with fresh vegetables, fruits, mm -hmm. meats. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. How does that happen? Well, our food program, I mean, we've really turned on our food program. You know, I get, um, I get fresh uh, produce three times a week, two to three times a week from the Easter market. You know, I've got a great vendor that goes down there and he can bring me whatever. Um, because that is huge in a restaurant. Our menu is not, is not big by any means. But I always say you can find something. You know, anything from great appetizers, sandwiches, and then you've got, we've got great fish, salmon, you know, you get into the pastas and that kind of stuff. And of course we do our prime rib on Friday and Saturday. Um, having things come weekly, bi-weekly is, is big, you know. You know, and I don't want you to forget one uh, other product that you use, and the store is specifically down near Eastern Market, and there is a difference when somebody says they have wiggly corned beef mm. on the menu. The right. wiggly corned beef is uh, right. pretty incredible from down there. So I imagine what your guys do in the back room mm -hmm. makes it just as... Yeah, we cook it in-house, we shave it in-house, and that's good. that goes on our Reuben sandwiches. It's delicious. Well, the Little Bar's had quite a career uh, from 33 up till now. It's had some tragedies, had some fires, mm -hmm. bankruptcies, whatever. It seems to have bounced back uh, like much of Marine City has. Mm -hmm. um, where's five to ten years from now, where's Cheryl Verkamen and what are you doing and what's the little bar doing? Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I say this all the time, I am so thankful. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. Who'd have mm. thunk it, right? Who'd have thunk that Marine City is the way it is now? Who'd have, who'd, you know, um, the little bar, I mean, you know, sales have quadrupled. I mean, it's, it's been a great ride. It's been a great ride, you know. Um, if the right person came along, I'd be willing to pass the torch, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a couple other projects in mind that I'd like to, I'd like to do before retirement. Well, good. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Well, for our folks at home, uh, we hope you've learned a little about the little bar in the history in Marine City. It has been there, uh, well, almost 80 years now, I guess, if we did our math correctly. Mm. Uh, Cheryl's a very vibrant owner uh, and is part of that revitalized Marine City. And as she aptly um, described it, it's not just the little downtown area where our great theaters and restaurants are, but it's all around the square of of the community of Marine City where there's many things happening. It's uh, our thanks to Cheryl for being our guest. And if you'd like to see this conversation or any of the many others we've done over the last year and a half, go to our website, watchctv.org, click on conversations, and you can pick up this and many other uh, of the conversations we've had. On behalf of Cable Channel 6 in downtown St. Clair, I'd like to thank Cheryl for being our guest. You're very welcome. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you. You've been watching Conversations with Tom Shorkey. Conversations explores the past, the present, and the future of the communities in which we live through the eyes of interesting individuals. If you have an idea for a future conversation, please contact us at www.watchctv.org. Thanks for watching Conversations with Tom Shorty.